Hello Capsules and welcome back to my channel this time again for another fitting guys and we are looking today at the Mehmedan which is the other battle cruiser building for drones so last week I showcased the Prophecy which was designed for longer range guiding and I was really tempted to see how I could do things differently with the Myrmidon. And to be honest, initially I tried to fit something which was a bit of a hybrid style where I could still maintain some range while making better use of the high slot weapons. And I was not really able to reach good balance. I mean, to get something which is in the 50-60 kilometer range so still able to do some uh, decent kiting you need to fit large weapon system and uh, with the, the power grid that we have the best I was able to do was to fit one large missile launcher which means basically that the, the DPS increase was very marginal and compared to the, the prophecy you were to kite much more closer to the targets and so you were taking much more punishment in the uh, in the encounter so it was not necessarily more efficient so i rethought the thing and well i thought back of my other videos i, I looked at and captain benzie's quote up close and personal and i thought well with the ship straight which basically focus on uh, armor repairing efficiency maybe we could do a brawler and this is what we are we are looking in so going back to the ship itself uh, except the appearance you, you like you don't like it's it's very atypical that's for sure but looking at the the trade descriptions it's very similar to the, the prophecy as i as i showcased last week we got a roll bonus for the drone plus 15 kilometers but basically we won't be using that uh, in this uh, in this build but we are going to make maximal use of the drone DPS. Of course, this is a drone boat, so advanced medium drone upgrade is very essential. If you can get it to uh, level five, which I have now, it means 150 more uh, percent drone DPS. And the second uh, items which you gain as a bonus is um, an increase in the in the drone hit points which is not very useful in in pve situation because basically the rats don't shoot back at the drone but could be useful in a pvp um, setting and the second part which is the the key factor in this uh, in this build is the battle cruiser command bonus where you get a uh, 7.5 percent uh, armor repair efficiency and so you will see the impact of this on the uh, on the fittings and the build i'm still not yet at level five i'm, I'm scaling for it um, i'm at level four but already you can achieve a very significant amount of uh, of uh, repair per cycle with uh, with uh, with this and so basically you you're at a 30 percent increase in efficiency you can can go uh, uh, still a bit more what else to look at when when you look at the general defense uh, of the of, of the ship so you see that you are fairly equal uh, shields and armor you get almost 1000 more in, in armor but because we are um, dealing with the uh, armor uh, repair efficiency skill we will be dealing with an armor tank and this is how the build has been has been structured but overall as for all guarantee ship you get a, a, a very straightforward structure armor shield uh, spread which is uh, roughly one third one third one third looking at the the capacitor and and the power grid um, uh, nothing uh, special to to say here you see that the, the scan resolution sensor strength is a bit weak and so you will see in the build that i compensated for that with a, a, an engineering rigs flight velocity is a, a bit under 200 so again um, as you want to maintain orbit close to your target afterburner or macro drive drive is really essential in them and it will help also cleaning up the loot afterwards so that's sits um, in general for the fit let's now look at the fittings 
So for the high slot, high slot basically there is no specific bonuses that you get. So you, theoretically you could you could fit anything that you you like, but because capacitor management will be really critical, I would recommend you go either like I did with uh, short range torpedo launchers because they don't use cap when they're firing or auto cannon where you can get the same um, short range uh, 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 fittings uh, uh, with, with that but because I don't have that much skill in cannon uh, I went for the torpedo launches and so I went for um, brick feet they are not that expensive on the market at the moment and you see that I, even with the, 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 the low skill that I have, because I, I don't have much train in, um, in medium uh, missile launcher, a couple of points here and there, already get a decent 60 uh, DPS per launcher, which gives me basically 180 DPS coming from the high slot, which is then much more than what we had on the Prophecy where the base the run skill with was um, around uh, 460 which is what i get here as well but um, the the high weapon was sort of a, a a close proximity defense grid for fast flying frigates that would have escaped the drones before reaching the uh, the point the only thing that you need to pay attention to is the range. So the missile range, missile range is um, around nine kilometers. So we will be looking at orbiting five to seven kilometers on the on the target. And so then both the drones and the, and the torpedo launcher will be able to hit the target very efficiently. For the mid slots, um, as said previously, so capacitor management will be very, very critical because you want to have your armor repair turning at all time, as well as the, the hardener. And so we went for three medium plus I'm a bit on the cheap side for those ones. Um, I didn't have the money yet to buy uh, officer grade or was too lazy maybe to, uh, uh, to do it. So I went for Mark 7. Uh, which basically will give me like a, a 70 gigajoule transfer per cycle. So three of them, that's 210 gigajoule, which is nice. If I would be able to fit a large one, um, that would be even better. But looking at the power grids and the current fittings, I don't think that would be feasible. But if any of you find a way to fit a large Nosferatu instead of the medium, I would be really interested to see a different build where that is. Because to be honest, the, the, the three medium as they stand in Mark 7 sometimes can be um, um, just in terms of what they give you back, especially when you are facing um, enemy ships which have the same capacity. And uh, um, I'm very afraid of going in against um, a battleship an elite battleship which would have uh, energy draining capacity i think in that case um, that would be a, a very difficult situation for for this ship drone wise it's the same layout as for the the prophecy i showcased so i'm not very keen on getting a single type of drones so i've always spread um, amongst the, the lasers and the explosive damage so the Valkyrie and the Amar drone just to make sure that I have a good balance against shield and armor and the fifth one uh, it can be a, a Vespa or it can be a hammerhead I know with a bit more of experience um, the, the Vespa is more suited for the kiting build because it has a higher velocity so it means it moves more rapidly from target to target but here as we will be very close to our enemies then the hammerheads with its thermal damage might prove a bit better but it's it's very marginal so going for a vespa or a hammerhead for me would give the same the same efficiency and as you can see each drone brings about 90 dps um, because there I have very strong skills in uh, in medium drone management and, and drone skill in, in general. For um, the low slot, uh, we are looking at two C-type uh, armor repair and you can see here each cycle, which is uh, in between 5-6 seconds, I get nearly 900 armor points back. 
so with the two being active it's almost 2k healing every five to six seconds and if you have seen the Nosferatu which gives me about 200 gigajoule then it means that from a capacitor perspective I'm fairly equal in between what I will gain from the Nosferatu and what I will be using uh, to maintain the two C-types repair um, uh, alive and kicking. But to be honest, um, uh, for the tier 8 and tier 9 encounters that you, you can do, usually one being active is sufficient. Uh, there might be some time to times where you want to activate the second one because you're taking a bit more of punishment, but one uh, is already very, very, very strong. To complement, I got the Corpus C-Type Adaptive Armor Hardener, so it will give me uh, 20 more percent um, additional resistance across the board for armor. And as you can see from the defense grid, the armor resistance is fairly good. So with the Armor Hardener, I should be about 70% for uh, electromagnet. Uh, EM uh, resistance uh, above 50 55 percent for thermal same for kinetic and about 40 percent for uh, for explosives so that will reduce significantly the damage that you will be taking and so help the repair do the job and maintain you uh, alive uh, in the movement so you absolutely need either an afterburner or a micro ramp drive which one of the two to be honest uh, I, I think it will be uh, the same efficiency. I do like the, the micro warp drive because after uh, the, the fight is done, it will uh, give you better speed to get back the loot. But it's a, it's a matter of, of what you will be encountering more into the encounters that you will be doing. Either you, you have more uh, scramblers and then the afterburner might be better because it will not be affected by those or if you get uh, uh, many ships with um, webifiers then potentially the micro wipe drive would be would be better but one or the others is the same and um, it will it will give you the same result which is closing the gap and the distance in between you and the wave of ship just to be in the optimal range for the torpedo launcher the fifth low slot i went for a back drone damage amplifier just to get a bit more juice out of the um, the drones to be honest this is something that you could easily swap it's not a big deal so you'll be losing five percent on the cold dps you will be losing the uh, uh, activated uh, uh, dps but if you 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 feel that you may go again um, um, maybe a storyline mission or something a bit more more difficult you may substitute either for um, another uh, armor hardener but reactive so that you will you will gain some additional uh, resistance across the board the other thing that i would uh, consider and i'm flipping through because i don't remember the the name of that is the bastion uh, steel plate that will give you additional armor and um, every minute about 30 second more additional armor that can make the difference means that during this uh, 25 seconds uh, activation times your repair can work on repairing your armor while the uh, steel plate take the brunt of the damage so um, I think both options could be viable I wouldn't recommend necessarily one over the other because I didn't test them third option could be um, the um, ah, and then again I forgot about the the name of the um, of, of the kit. Uh, it's the oops damage control, which again will give you shield, but that will not be useful. But a bit of, of passive increase in your armor resistance, and when activated, an additional um, uh, armor resistance. So that that's the third option that you may want to. Uh, consider for um, the build. As regards the internal rigs, so this is very different than the one from the, the Prophecy. So 
you will get for the uh, auxiliary nano pumps. The nano pumps will boost again further your repair. So here I get an additional 25%. If I had the money for a, a level three, I would, because then it will push the um, the armor repair well above the 900 mark. Uh, and, and that will increase the survivability of the of the ships. The second that I have is the nanobot accelerator, so it will reduce the cycle times on your repair. So you will not only repair more, but you will repair faster um, um, as well. And the third, I went for a drone five power augmenters just to boost up the main source of DPS, which are the drones. So here yeah, you could maybe switch to uh, the one which reduced the um, activation cycle time, will boost the DPS as well. Didn't benchmark which one was better over the other because the, the money comes from my own pocket. I'm not in the uh, development environment where I can, you know, shift and, and switch in between the, the modules and rigs and see the, uh, the effect. So I had that fitted from this uh, initial setup that I tried to do and I, I kept it because I don't think that will make a significant difference. Either the cycle time or the uh, direct um, damage increase will give you roughly the same the same amount of, uh, of DPS. As regard the engineering rigs, so to lock on faster, because this is really important, you will be in the middle of the enemy waves, you need to lock as fast as possible so you can start hitting them and killing them. So I went for a targeting system subcontroller, which will increase my my um, lock, well, or decrease my lock time um, actually uh, uh, in there. And this is very useful. I got um, a capacity control circuit, which will just uh, uh, increase the cycle, the heat charge time of my, my capacitor. So I, I will recharge at a, at a faster pace. I know there are discussion about whether you should use uh, a district or have two of the semiconductor memory cells because if you increase the overall capacitor as the recharge rate is based on the total uh, capacitor amount you also increase the recharge rate a bit but i i choose to um, mix one of the uh, the semiconductor and the one which um, reduce the time needed for recharging your, your capacitor and that is about it uh, regarding the internal so you see really the focus here is not on the range as was for the prophecy but it's much more on maintaining your capacitor on uh, stability so that your armor repair can sustain the damage that you will be taking in terms of using the build um, it's a bit different so you need to warp directly in the middle of the um, enemy wave so you won't warp at, at 50 or 90 kilometers yet as you would do on the prophecy you select your target and basically you will move on the reverse order from the the largest to the smallest targets and the only exception from this rules is really when you have either ships that um, scramble or web you and and that to be honest can be managed it's not necessarily um, a shift of focus but if you have a ship that is draining you then that needs to be taken care immediately so that shift your primary target from cruiser or battle cruiser to the ship that is actually draining you because otherwise you will not be able to maintain your armor repair and you will be in serious serious trouble okay and if you if you continue to watch the video you will see a showcase of a tier 9 encounters three waves accelerated timeline so you don't get bored uh, with uh, like 20 minutes of, uh, of a fight so you can see a, a bit better indeed how i managed the, um, the the waves in the reverse order compared to what you would do with a, a, a kiting build where you, you, you target first the, the small ship moving forward you at high speed here you take out first um, the largest source of damage that's basically the model you take out first the largest source of damage so uh, good watching if you want to see uh, the, the demo in and the ship in actions otherwise thank you for watching um, hit like button subscribe if you like the channel there will be more content coming um, my alpha clone is is reaching maturity so i will start uh, doing some video about 
what exactly you can achieve in this game um, with a basic uh, account and uh, play as a, as a free to play players and see what you can enjoy, what you can do and what you cannot do uh, with that. See you next time!